Sergeant Frederick Emmett Dunn. Often the victims of crimes of passion are the innocent people who happen to be close to those caught up in powerful emotions. The murder of Sergeant Reginald Waters, for example, shows how love can set an otherwise decent man to, to kill, kill his, his best, best friend. friend. Tall, handsome Sergeant Frederick Emmett Dunn and his five-foot, one-inch friend Sergeant Reginald Waters were stationed in Duisburg, Germany as part of the British post-war occupation force. While in Germany, Waters met and married a beautiful ex-nightclub singer called Mia. At first, Emmett Dunn tried to repress his feelings for his mate's wife, but the more time he spent in their company, the more his passion for her grew and the more he came to resent the fact that his unremarkable short friend had married her when she should have been his. Slowly, the bonds of friendship were overwhelmed by jealousy, to the point where Emmett Dunn was prepared to kill the man he had once shared so much with. On November 30th, 1953, the body of Reginald Waters was found hanging from the banister at his barracks on the British Army base. It was Emmett Dunn who broke the news to Mia, telling the widow that he would be constantly at her side to help her through her ordeal. He also gave a statement to the police saying that he had driven Waters to his quarters at 7pm the night before, bid him good night and left. The doctor who conducted the post-mortem concluded that death was caused by shock brought on by strangulation. Waters, he wrote on his report, had committed suicide by hanging. There was something amiss though. Despite the verdict, gossip began to circulate. It was whispered that Waters had committed suicide because his wife was having a secret fling with his best friend. The marriage of Mia and Emmett Dunn in England in June 1954, just seven months later, did nothing to still the wagging tongues. But it wasn't just gossip who was suspicious of the events. The marriage was also viewed with suspicion by one of the official army criminal investigators named Sergeant Frank Walters. He had previously been bothered by the suicide verdict too and did not believe that Waters was typed to take his own life no matter how serious his personal problems were. When he heard about the wedding, Walters contacted Scotland Yard to report his concerns. In February 1955, an order arrived at British headquarters in Duisburg to exhume Waters' body. Examination by a more experienced pathologist revealed that he had died not by hanging but by a severe, severe blow across, across the, the front, front of the, of the throat. throat. Just the kind of blow that might have been inflicted by someone trained in unarmed combat, like Emmett Dunn. At the same time, Emmett Dunn's half-brother Ronald, who had been a private at Duisburg, confessed to his own involvement in Waters' death. He told investigators that he had helped Emmett Dunn hang Waters up on the banister after his panicked half-brother told him he had killed him by accident. In March 1955, Emmett Dunn was arrested at the home in Taunton, Somerset he shared with Mia. Despite his claim that he had acted in self-defense when Waters threatened to shoot him and had only meant to stun, he was charged with murder. The case, held before a seven-man army court in Dusseldorf, was covered extensively in the British and German press. In July 1955, Emmett Dunn was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. However, he escaped a fate that many thought he richly deserved. West Germany had abolished capital punishment and foreign army bases had to conform with the law of the country. Instead, Emmett Dunn was given a life sentence. He served 10 years in Norwich Jail in Britain before being released in 1965 and, and then, then disappeared, disappeared into, into history. history.